Good evening, everybody. It seems such a shame to break up uh, the buzz of conversation, but I will. Um, my name's Rachel. I'm Rural Dean for South Cambridge Deanery. Uh, it's with great delight that I welcome you this evening to this service as we welcome Imogen, uh, new vicar here at St Paul's. So a really warm welcome to this service, to family and friends, to Imogen, to congregation members and to friends and previous congregation members from further afield, I think from Rugby, from Chelmsford, from London, uh, maybe from elsewhere. Wherever you've come from, whether you know this church well or it's your first time here, uh, I hope you will relax and enjoy this celebration as well as service of welcome to Imogen. So a very warm welcome. Would you stand? to our choir for leading us and we're going to join together our voices now as we sing our opening hymn praise my soul the king of heaven
Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Please do sit down. It's wonderful to be here this evening on this great occasion. And the first thing I need to do is bring greetings from our bishop and from Bishop Dagmar. Unfortunately, they had already booked their summer holidays before we decided we couldn't wait any longer for Imogen to arrive. So um, if you want to know what an archdeacon is, it's what you get if you can't get a bishop. (laughs) It would be a shame to proceed any further uh, in this service without giving thanks for the long history of mission and ministry and service that has been here at St. Paul and especially to pay tribute to Michael Beckett and to give thanks for his ministry as we prepare to welcome Imogen for this new chapter in your life. It would also be remiss not to say a huge thank you to the many people here at St. Paul's who have worked incredibly hard to keep the ministry and the mission of this place going since Michael departed last year. It would be invidious to name names But I do know some names, and I know some people have worked incredibly hard. So thank you, all of you, very much indeed. As we turn to the future then, it's wonderful to be able to introduce Imogen, but also to welcome Olaf and Jonti and Seb into our midst. And we hope that you will experience this service as a great welcome to you to be part of this church and this community. Everything you need for the service, you should find in the service sheet. However, I need to warn you that we've done some jiggery-pokery. We thought you'd get fed up of my voice, and since we have the rural dean here, uh, we decided to give her lots of my parts. So if at various points uh, you see her doing things you think I should be doing, it's not because we don't know what we're doing. It's just we didn't know we were going to do it when we did the order of service. We have come together to worship God and to celebrate the ministry of the whole people of God in this place. God blesses his people with a rich variety of gifts. It is our duty and our joy to use those gifts as we work with God for the coming of the kingdom. Today we collate and induct the Reverend Imogen Ney to this benefice. Together, we dedicate ourselves to the service of God in this community and listen afresh to God's call to each one of us. Eternal God, whose Son Jesus Christ sent his disciples into the world to preach the gospel of your kingdom, confirm us in this mission and help us to love the good news which we proclaim through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the patron, I present the new minister, the Reverend Imogen Ney, to be collated to this benefice. We also, as the parish representatives, elected to share in making this appointment, are delighted to confirm our acceptance of this presentation. On behalf of the Bishop, I thank you for this presentation. Do please sit down. Imogen has served previously as Vicar of the Parish of St Andrew in Rugby, and I'm delighted now to welcome Matt Robinson, who is going to commend her to us. Thank you, Matt. We're all here today to welcome Reverend Ney to the start of her new ministry here at St. Paul's. And it is my honor, and in this short space of time, I prize you all 
of the inspiration she was and that I have every faith will be. My name is Matthew and Reverend Ney and I met back in 2013 where during our interregnum we too were all waiting for that someone God has promised. And along came Reverend Ney, as the lamb she is. Not as the lamb to the slaughter, mind you, but it, as it was soon revealed to us, she had come as a lamb with a lion's heart, who reminded us with power and wisdom, both humility and strength, in spirit and in truth, that when we as a church are united, we can achieve so much with praise, with honor and glory to God. We could make the church be at the heart of all things. Whoever sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly, but whoever sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. Reverend Ney's vantage point was that we were made to worship and worship together we would. As a church community with Reverend Ney's involvement and encouragement, a prosperous children's ministry arose as well as pastoral care, evangelism, healing ministries, and outreach worship. The number of new young families rose and with regular new attendees, everyone was welcomed in Jesus' name and all new possibilities were nurtured. Tell me and I forget. Teach me and I may remember. Involve me and I will learn. Reverend Ney is someone who wants you to be involved, to learn, not just to believe, but to act on that belief. For when you act, results are forthcoming. And soon at St. Andrews, she had set off an approach that not only a long-serving congregation felt welcome toward, but a church where there was a buzz of activity and somewhere that had re-reinstated itself to a world of potential within the community. If we act upon the word, we put into practice what the Holy Spirit is teaching us. Reverend Ney refreshed in us that we must let God, let the church, always be a place of mercy and hope where everyone is welcomed, loved, and forgiven, even me. Being both soft and strong is a combination very few have mastered. Yet Reverend Ney is conscious of the fact that being humble means recognizing that we are not on earth to see how important we can become. But the key to strength is seeing how much difference we can make in the lives of others. And she embodies that we are not just what we do or what people say about us, but that we are the beloved daughters and sons of God. Reverend Ney will without doubt make a huge difference to the lives that are set to encounter her here. And I can encourage you after my own experience and with the power of the Holy Spirit, let God, who is a let Imogen, let you be who God wants you to be, conformed in the image of his Son. And just as he who has called you is holy, be holy in all that you do. I see lights of hope that are still shining. So my advice to you would be to go easy on each other in these new waters. 
Try and immerse yourselves in his love and choose to go together wherever this journey takes you. Support one another. You are not alone. And if you ever feel like you are, sometimes struggling, give yourself some moment. Remember that we are all in this boat together. Know that there is hope. Never doubt his plans for us to prosper us. Take courage. Do not be afraid. Jesus said that. And now, as it is written, let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. I ask you to thank our Father, our strength and Redeemer, who gave us the word, and to remember that great is the company of those who publish it. Reverend, long may you continue to be a publisher of faithfulness. Thank you, my friend, and may God continue to bless you and your family. Amen. In just a moment, I'm going to invite Imogen to come forward for, um, to swear the oaths and declarations. This is one of those odd Church of England things, um, and it might be worth saying a couple of words about it before we do. Um, Imogen is going to make three uh, pledges. The first is that she's going to promise to stand within the tradition of the Church of England, the tradition that has nurtured her faith in recent years at least. And that's a reminder to her and to all of us that we have a continuity with the past and that there are great riches, treasures of faith and wisdom upon which we can draw as we engage in ministry and mission today. She's then going to swear an oath of allegiance to the Queen. I am not going to ask her if she's a royalist or a republican. Whatever your politics, I think we could all agree that the Queen is an extraordinary example of public service. And Church of England clergy, like clergy from other denominations, are not just servants of their congregations, but servants of the whole community and society at large. And so her oath of allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen is a reminder of that public service which she leads but which we all offer in our own way. And then finally, she'll swear an oath of allegiance to the bishop. And the bishop, if you like, represents the wider church, the church beyond this local church in this particular place. A reminder that we're part of a great fellowship of Christians, Anglican Christians and ecumenical colleagues and friends. A reminder that we need each other We need each other's prayers. We need each other's support as we seek to be one in Christ. So, Imogen, if you'd like to come forward, and Rachel, let the declaration of assent be made and subscribed and the oaths taken according to law. The Church of England is part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, worshiping the one true God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, which faith the Church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation. Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. In the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Imogen Ney, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds, and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness, 
and in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only the forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. I, Imogen Ney, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. And I, Imogen Ney, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Bishop of Ely and his successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Thank you. You can just sign on the bishop, right? We remain seated for our readings. The epistle this evening is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 3, reading from verses 18 to the end. Do not deceive yourselves. If you think that you are wise in this age, you should become fools so that you may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. So let no one boast about people, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All are yours, and you are Christ's, and Christ is God's. The Gospel reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night long but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to burst. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were astounded at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Well, Imogen, if this evening's Bible readings are anything to go by, incredibly rich texts, 
then you're going to have a very full ministry here. There are an awful lot of fish for you to fry. With so much to get stuck into, the problem for the preacher now and for the pastor tomorrow is knowing just where to get started. Whether in the scriptures or in the parish, when faced with such a wealth and variety, so much challenge and opportunity and inspiration, we can feel overwhelmed. So in moments like these, I have my own very simple process of discernment. I look at the text before me or the situation and I notice anything in it that I really don't like and that I'd rather run away from. And I found that today at the very end of that reading from the Gospel of Luke. They left everything and followed him. That's one of those killer texts, isn't it? It's the kind of text that makes me wonder, frankly, if I've ever actually been a follower of Jesus. They left everything and followed him. Whoever the they is, I know it isn't me. And frankly, I know it's not likely to be me anytime soon. I've got kids. I've got a mortgage. I've got rising uh, fuel bills. I'm not about to leave all of that behind. So does that mean that Jesus is going to leave me behind? It's worth leaving that question hanging in the air and the challenge and the provocation that comes with it. But perhaps I'm also looking at it through the wrong end of the telescope. As usual, I'm thinking about myself and what I stand to lose when surely the invitation is to think about Christ and what he has to give. I'm worried about what I'm gonna have to leave behind. He is offering to take me somewhere new. This perspective, Imogen, might help you as you come to minister in this place. Because probably the biggest risk that you face is the temptation to believe yourself and to let other people believe that you have what it takes to be a successful vicar of St. Paul's. Now, don't get me wrong. You are a very gifted and talented person. If you weren't, we wouldn't have given you the job. So we do have great confidence in you. But in the nicest possible way, Imogen, you are not the answer to our prayers. Think of the disciples long ago. They were expert fishermen. They had all the skills and experience they needed for their work. But they labored in vain until Jesus came along, who was a carpenter who probably knew nothing about nets and boats and fishing. This gospel story illustrates St. Paul's teaching in that first reading Conventional wisdom, trust in human competence and self-sufficiency turns out to be foolishness when it comes to the things of God. The point is that the only way to approach Christian life and Christian ministry is with empty nets, so to speak, leaving behind any ideas we have about how we're going to make it on our own earning success through our own strength. That's justification by works. The task, if we can call it that, is to make ourselves empty enough for God to come and fill us. Sometimes, very often, God works through our gifts and our skills. Sometimes God works in spite of them. But whether God works through us or in spite of us, it's always God's work. And only God knows what true success looks like in the end. So what do you do, Imogen? As a priest, you're called to stand sacramentally between God and God's people, like a channel of grace. But in case that idea offends against anyone's theological principles, let's just remember 
that a channel only works if it's open at both ends and empty in the middle. The job of the priest is not to get in the way of people's access to God. It's to help that access, to bring God to the people and the people to God, but to do it like John the Baptist. The priest says again and again, not me. I am not the one you're looking for. I am not the Messiah. There is one much greater than I. Or as St. Paul reminds us this evening, there's no boast in Christian leadership because Christian leaders have, of their own, nothing to give. Our only job is to tell people, echoing St. Paul's words, all things are yours and you belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. Your first job, Imogen, is to hear this for yourself and then to pass it on. And sometimes, of course, you'll be reminded of it by the people among whom you serve, because they will minister to you too. They will show you the face of Christ in this community. They will help you to see God. If you all start with God and your own need of God, then everything else will follow. So Imogen, thank you for coming here. Thank you for bringing so much with you. Your lovely family, of course, whom you must treasure. And all of your gifts and experience and skill, which you must nurture. But most of all, thank you for being willing to start over again and with us to empty your nets and be ready to receive what God has to give. So may God fill you with his grace and bless your ministry. Amen.
Please sit down. At this point in the service, we give Imogen the, the legal title to this parish. Alexander James Hughes, Clerk, Archdeacon of Cambridge, and Commissary of the Right Reverend Father in God Stephen, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Ely, to our beloved in Christ, Imogen Joyce Nay, Clerk, greeting. I do hereby collate and admit to you as vicar of the benefice of St. Paul Cambridge within the diocese and jurisdiction of the said Lord Bishop and belonging to his collation in right of his bishopric. And I invest you with all rights and duties of the said benefice and commit to you the cure of souls of the parishioners thereof saving to the Lord Bishop of Ely and his successors their Episcopal rites. In testimony whereof, I have hereunto set my hand, and the Episcopal seal of the Lord Bishop of Ely is hereunto affixed this first day of September in the year of our Lord, 2022. Thank you. Imogen, receive this cure of souls, which is both yours and the bishop's, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. God has called the whole body of the church to share in his mission to the world. Within that body, he calls some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip all his people for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. God our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for those called together in this place to be generous and visible people of Jesus Christ that in their vocation and ministry, each may be an instrument of your love and grant to those who serve in ministry here the needful gifts of grace. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Rachel, receive this mandate by which you will induct Imogen into the rights and responsibilities of this office, and you and I together, when I'm being an archdeacon, will defend her, so inducted. With this mandate from the bishop, I induct Imogen into the possession of the benefice of St. Paul's with all the rights and responsibilities of this office, and defend Imogen, so inducted. Imogen, I, Rachel Rosborough, Rural Dean of Cambridge South Deanery, induct you into the possession of the benefice of St. Paul's. The Lord himself is your keeper. The Lord is your defence upon your right hand. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Yes, it is he who shall keep your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Amen. Amen. I wonder if Jonty and Seb want to come and help me with this. I'd be too shy. Quickly. <laughs> you 
You've got to ring this bell as loudly as you possibly can. We do it together. Go. I have to let it jangle, that's it. Yay. <laughs> well done. Well done, boys. Okay. Got the keys, can I kneel without falling over is the next bit I have to master. Imogen, I place you in the stall of the minister of this parish. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in the ways of truth and peace. Amen. Amen. We beg you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who are working among you, and in the Lord's fellowship, are your leaders and counsellors. Hold them in the highest possible esteem and affection for the work they do. You must live at peace among yourselves. Bear one another's burdens and, and so, so fulfill, fulfill the, the law, law of, of Christ. Christ. And we would urge you, Imogen, to admonish the careless, encourage the faint-hearted, support the weak, and to be very patient with them all. Be always joyful, pray continually, give thanks whatever happens, for this is what God in Christ wills for you. Amen. So let us pray together. When I say, Lord, hear us, please respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Merciful and loving God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. So increase in your people a desire to pray and to worship you, the one true God. We ask you to bless all those who gather week by week at St. Paul's Church for prayer, worship, activities and events. We acknowledge the many challenges that we have faced over the past few years, from the COVID pandemic to illness and death within the church family, the stresses and strains of the climate crisis and the current cost of living crisis. We are truly like sheep without a shepherd. So help us to hear the voice of your son, Jesus Christ to follow him, be led by him, and ever attentive to his words. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that as a community, we may be there for one another, seeking to serve each other as Christ first served us, and longing to be formed into a community of grace through the leadership of your Son. We pray for the many groups that happen in and around St. Paul's, holding before you the eco group, the hospitality group, the inclusive church group, and children and family ministry, and many others close to our hearts. We give you thanks that despite all the odds, you offer us a way to be people of both hope and justice. Give us a greater vision of your kingdom and open to us the gates of salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for and give you thanks for the many different faith groups in the vicinity. We pray especially for our near neighbours at the Muslim College and for the Beth Shalom Reform Synagogue, for all faith groups and local churches of all denominations. We pray for our MP, for local councillors, charities, community groups, St Paul's School and many other schools and colleges in the parish. 
Help us to work together with all those of goodwill, building bonds of unity built on mutual respect and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. When the needs of our world and the challenges of the moment threaten to overwhelm us, help us to trust and know that in you we have a constant source of hope. May we not fear nor threaten, but faithfully and patiently seek your ways for us working tirelessly to spread, spread the gospel of your everlasting love and compassion through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing our next hymn.
We have my experience at rugby to thank for this next bit. When I arrived at rugby, we had this wonderful liturgy and someone told me I had to go into the kitchen and be given a teapot. Well, I just couldn't resist this happening again. So um, I think people are gonna come forward and offer me things to represent uh, community here at St. Paul's. I hope so. Yes, it's there. <laughs> Imogen, accept this teapot as a sign of the hospitality in which we share as servants of God. Will you join with us in welcoming others as if they were Christ? By the help of God, I will. Thank you. That's fine. I'm shy too. Jesus said, whoever becomes humble like a child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Will you partner with us in placing children at the center of your ministry in this place? By the help of God, I will. Oh, thank you so much. Beautiful pens here. And what else have we got? We've got God's great story of salvation, the Jesus storybook, and something else. Wonderful. Story Jesus told. Thank you so much. Will you open the scriptures among us, teaching us faithfully from God's holy word, and allowing yourself to be continually transformed. Will you bring, break bread among us and with us so that we may be formed as the body of Christ in this place? By the help of God, I will. transform the unjust structures of society and strive to safeguard the integrity of creation. By the help of God, I will. Okay, is it going to break? <laughs> the, the globe is breaking. It's prophetic. It doesn't stand. <laughs> it won't stand, okay. <laughs> We believe that God calls us to discover together his transforming presence in our lives and in every community. And we are called as followers of Christ to deepen our commitment to God through communion, worship and prayer. We are called as the baptised people of Christ to dwell in the word and to grow together as God's church, finding disciples and nurturing leaders and the gifts of all God's people. We are called as a people who pray to be fully alive in Christ led by the Holy Spirit to engage fully and courageously in sharing God's goodness with everyone. So we have heard and reflected upon our calling to deepen our commitment to God, to grow his church, and to engage fully and courageously with the needs of our communities, to work for peace and justice in our world, and to care for God's creation. So will you commit to this shared vision as we seek to be transformed as the confident people of God in this place? By the help of God, I will. So let us pray together. 
We praise and thank you, God of the journey, for all your gifts to us in the past. We look to you as fellow traveler and faithful companion on the way ahead. Shelter and protect us from all harm and anxiety. Give us grace to let go of all that holds us back and grant us courage to meet the new life you have promised us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Richard Morgan. I am the lay chairman of the Deanery Synod for South Cambridge. And it's wonderful to see so many people here from rugby. You have the best shaped ball. But, but here, you know, you might find that people are more keen on the river. And from people from Chelmsford, and uh, I know that um, Andrew, St. Said, and St. Paul will all be uh, praying for you and your ministry here. So now it's my um, happy duty to ask uh, members of the local community uh, and uh, uh, ecumenical partners to come up and uh, give their best wishes to your new priest. Well, I'm happy we're Thank you, your new priest. 
So now I have to do the strangest thing, which is give out the notices. So I had to scramble to the church ward and say, what on earth do I say in the notices? Because I know nothing about what's going to happen in the parish. Um, but it's my enormous, uh, it's my great, I've lost all my words because I'm overcome with emotion, but I'm enormously thankful to you all for being here tonight, um, joining up different parts of my story, um, from rugby to Chelmsford, um, back to Cambridge because we were here once before without our two boys, they were an addition later on. Um, uh, Alex's words about being emptied, I feel that God has emptied me hugely over the last few years, so I hope he's going to fill me up again. Does that happen? <laughs> Say my prayers. So you're all invited to come um, and share in a glass of fizz, I think, and some cake after the service. I hope that all of you don't have to rush off. I know that some of you have drives ahead of you, um, but I hope you can uh, stay for a little bit after the service. Um, and then on Sunday, my first service here, uh, first communion service, which I'm told is at half past 10, so let's hope I turn up at the right time. Um, we're going to have a communion service um, and afterwards a bring and share lunch. But I'm told that there's lots and lots of food, so if you don't manage to bring any food with you, you'll be very, very welcome. Um, and uh, a huge thanks to those of you who've helped me arrive here um, in Cambridge. Um, the, the house is lovely, and we feel so welcomed by the cards that have been dropped through the door. So thank you so much for your welcome. Stay. If I could invite the church wardens to come and join us at the front. And they found the sticks. Yeah. <laughs> Would you please stand as we pray for God's blessing? The Lord be with you. And also with you. Eternal God, giver of love and power, your Son, Jesus Christ, has sent us into all the world to preach the gospel of his kingdom. Confirm us in this mission and help us to live the good news we proclaim. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.